Hi everyone, welcome to Sharing Your Vision. Today we have a very special guest. He's from Doral, Florida, and he's an expert in martial arts. Julio Anta is with us via Skype. Julio, welcome to the program. Thank you for being here with us. No, thank you for having me. This is wonderful. It's an opportunity to share about martial arts. And um, as a Christian man that you are, and um, uh, there's just so many people out there that uh, think that martial arts does not mix too well with Christianity. Why is that? Well, I can agree partly. It depends on the martial art. Some martial arts have spiritual things of Buddhism, Hinduism, some. And, if the, and a lot of the instructors that might not be Christian are doing these things or telling you to do certain things that I know as a Christian I can't do because if it's if it's it's of one of these religions, but they do. But outside of that, on the contrary, I have a lot of reasons. One, I teach Krav Maga, which is what they teach in Israel, in colleges, in the for the police, for the military, which is a self-defense system that it's totally different. Um, they don't even like to call it a martial arts. They say it's tactical self-defense. But outside of that, how do I see it biblically? And I know people can counter me with other things, but if you think back in the time when Jesus w was with the disciples, you know, it's when he talked about turning the other cheek, if they slapped you and all that. But right before he gets crucified, he tells them to buy swords. Well, they tell him, they answer. He tells them to sell their cloaks or coats and to buy swords. So the disciples answer him that they had two. And he said, that's enough. Swords. Okay, so that's one example. Now, what? Do, then the other example is when Peter cuts the ear off and he puts it back and said, it's not the time. So Jesus is telling disciples to carry swords. Well, in today's society, I'm not allowed to carry a sword or I'll be put in, in jail. So I believe personally, and everybody's belief and conviction is different. I do believe if you live by the sword, you will die by the sword. That means if I'm a violent person that's looking for fights, then I, that's a life I'm going to end up with. Yet, I do believe that the Lord says we can protect ourselves. And my other example is, I'll tell any Christian man, if you see somebody abusing your children, your wife, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to defend them. Well, how are you going to defend them if you don't know how? So those are some of my things. And again, I'm sure there's people. I've had Christians tell me straight out, oh, that's against what the Lord, that's wrong, that's this. You know, everybody's got to have their own commitment in their hearts. But I strongly believe that as a Christian, I have the right to defend myself. And I think as a Christian there, we can go through other verses. I honestly, I can't, I'm one of those, you know, with a terrible memory that I can't tell you exactly where it's at the Bible, even though I've read it, um, that tells us we got to defend and we got to protect. Yes, I understand completely. And uh, I wanted to ask you if we can go back uh, to your earlier years. I know that you've done quite a few things and that's bodybuilding and other um, uh, jobs that you were able to obtain because of this background? Yes, well, um, we go, I mean, way back, as a little kid, I was living in New York originally, and, you know, I, I long, long story short, I told my father one day that I wanted to look like Steve Reeves in the Hercules movies, and then I saw, I think it might have been Tom and Jerry, the mouse flipped the cat. And I told my dad, what is that? And he goes, at that time, he didn't know the difference, karate, judo, whatever. And I said, oh, I want to do that because I was the weakest, littlest, skinniest kid, sick. We moved to Florida because of my illness. And um, I wanted that. That's what I wanted. You know, I thought that was manliness, having a strong body like Hercules and being able to defend myself. So... It was a dream as a kid, but I was pretty lazy, I'll be honest with you, and I would quit things. So at 14, I started martial arts, and then where I did start, I did weights on and off, 
but very off than on. But at 18 years old in high school is when I decided to do weights. And eventually, before I became a Christian, um, I competed in bodybuilding competition. And then after recently, the last three years, I've started competing again. Um, so when I started the martial arts series and I learned to learn to not give up on things, not quit was after I became a Christian. I got my black belt after I became a Christian, even though I had done uh, martial arts, I did do a lot on and off, on and off. But when was that moment in time that uh, the Lord came into your life and why? Okay. Um, the way it was through school, more in college, the media, I became agnostic. Agnostic, I believed there was a God, but I didn't know which one. I was born Catholic, and I just didn't like going to church. The thing started with confession. I didn't want to tell the priest my sins. I felt embarrassed, you know? So slowly but surely, I started, I was getting into martial arts, and I started reading about other religions and all that, And but I didn't know which one. So then I did pray, and I go, whoever you are, I pray that to God. Whoever the real God is, is who I want to follow. So long, long story short, I go into the Marine Corps. I'm agnostic. I am. I meet this guy that one of my brothers knew that literally was a delinquent that had gone to the Marine Corps. At that time, you could go. It depends on your crime not to go to a prison. So this guy, I'm talking to him, and he's telling me what to expect from the Marine Corps. And he tells me the first thing you're going to do is ask for your Bible. And you're going to start reading a Bible. And I thought he was joking. This guy, I knew he went in for I don't even know what crime, but, and I start laughing. And he tells me, yeah, I didn't believe him. Well, I already had started lifting weights. I wasn't competitive bodybuilder yet, but I was pretty big, but I had never run. I was, like I said, I was a non-athletic person before the weights. So I go to boot camp. Oh my God, the first moment I get there, you step on those yellow, Marine Corps, you step on these yellow, they're infamous, these yellow footsteps when you get there. And the screaming, the yelling, everything breaks loose. And from that moment, all I waited for was that little Bible. I started reading the Bible. I never missed a day in church while I was in boot camp. Again, not being, a, not being born again, not really knowing. I'm a new, literally a new Christian. I had never read the Bible before. I promised God, I know you're going to laugh at this one. I promised God that if I didn't get recycled, recycled was you got three phases. If they bring you back, you have to start that phase again. And think my running was so bad, I was in the back with all the, the overweight people. And I didn't want to get recycled. That's doing another four weeks. So I prayed that if I didn't get recycled, I would never miss a day of church. Now, how can you keep that promise, you know? <laughs> and... Um, I didn't get recycled. I didn't go to church again. So I went to, I was in the reserves. So I, you know, after school, I went back to Miami and I did then maybe a year, year and a half after a lot of my bodybuilding friends had become Christians and they invited me to church and I did go to church. I don't count that as when I accepted the Lord, but I did go up and, you know, accept the Lord, but I wasn't born again yet. I spent three months going to church. I changed my life totally, but it was forcefully. I forcefully didn't want to go to the clubs, didn't want to hang out with my old friends. I was in the Marine Corps and I was all by myself in the in the reserves. And my friends would come up to me telling me, you're not, they were right, I wasn't happy. It wasn't being born again. So then I consider it, which I still don't consider the time that, but I still say I backslid for three years. And then everything happened to me. So, in a quick way, I dislocate both shoulders fighting in a tournament, both. So now I go to the doctors, and they're telling me that if I ever did weights again or martial arts, I might not be able to move my arms again. So I'm kind of down and depressed. My car blows his engine, so I have no car. Girlfriend I had, that literally was satanic, I'm not joking. I don't know how if I already had an experience with God starts seeing a friend of mine and, and breaks up with me. And before that, I lost my job because she came in screaming at me at work. So I was in this worst time of my life. 
And I just, um, I go to my, my, by now my mom and dad that had laughed at me, not laughed, they were concerned because they saw me, you know, how I had changed and they were very, my mom was very strong Catholic. My mom, my mom, she was even going to be a nun before my dad. My dad wasn't a Santero, yet he did the, the saints and the cigar and all that, even though he didn't dress in white and do all that stuff. So now I find out both of my parents are going to church, a Christian church. And this happens to me. So I go to my mom. I need to go to church. I'll remember it. I remember it was the first Monday after the 4th of July. I tell her, I'm going to go to church with you. I go to church with her and I'm actually 29 years old, but I've always looked younger and I go there and that's where I meet my wife. And she had told me, I had never dated anyone my mom told me because I would be embarrassed if something happened. The first time I listened to my mom, I'm going to be married now 32 years. Um, so my mom tells me about my wife. And she says that when she saw me there, she thought that I was one of these young teenage 20-something-year-old kids that the mom forced to come to church. And it was because I felt a lot of ignorance in me because we don't know. I felt that everybody in church at that moment were, I don't know, not sinners, and that I was the only one coming from the world and everybody was looking at me. So that's how I became, I again, I had two other encounters with God before, but I don't think I was born again. So um, 30, about 30, is going to be 34, 35 years is when I've been, I feel born again, and my life changed totally. Julio, once your life took a turn for the better, uh, where you felt that your life was now being geared in a new direction, that's when you were able to do the things that you most love to do, which is bodybuilding and self-defense mechanisms? Well, no, not yet. I'll be honest with you. It was after, but I was already a Christian. When I first became a Christian, I, I was so broken that I had no desire for nothing. I remember going to a retreat and in the men's um, um, barracks or room, they go to me, they asked everybody what their goal in life was and everybody had goals. Finish college, become a police officer, do this, do that. I didn't. It was wrong too. All I said was I need to get close to God. And at that point, that's all I did. I, that's, when, that's when I feel that I read the most, the Bible, that, that I grew the fastest. I feel that, that the first few years is where I grew the fastest. And um, that's what I did. You know, it was, I still was very in, in, in life, let's say job wise, I was very unsuccessful. I never stopped lifting, but I was lifting very light and less because of my, I still have pain. Um, so what happened was when my life, re okay, my life had changed already. I was a different person, totally different person. And I got married, had um, my first child. And no, I even had my second child already. And again, um, I was working at the prison. That was another thing that the Lord, I was, I didn't have good jobs. And I, I, I applied and I started working at the prison at a, at a, at a Florida state prison for 10 years, which was great. It was changed my life. It was a blessing from God and a life change. And there, I don't even know if we're going to have time. I got some wild stories about encounters with God at a prison. But anyway, so one day I'm sitting in the prison, I would say 25, 26 years ago. So I already had been a Christian maybe 10 years or a little less. I'm sitting there and a friend of mine that worked at the prison that went to a different church that I went to comes in and he tells me, wow, look what the pastor was talking about. This is incredible. I had never heard this. He goes, Habakkuk 223. And honestly, guys, I'm telling you, I'm an open book. I can remember very little verses because I have a terrible memory. Yet that one I never forgot and never will. And I always talk to people about that. Habakkuk 223. It tells you, paraphrasing, write your vision and in God's time it will come true. So I wrote my vision for three years. Now I do one year at a time. Like in, in December... Sometimes it might be the beginning of January, but it's usually December, January, I write my vision. But see, 
I feel that the Lord sometimes gets you when you're a baby in something and gives you more because that's when I got the most. So I put, I was already doing martial arts and I never stopped lifting 100%, but not body competitive bodybuilding type. So I wrote where I was going to teach, where I wanted to teach. I go, I'm going to open a school. I hadn't gotten my black belt yet. That was another crazy story. My teacher had me nine months telling me I'm testing you next week. I'm testing you in a month and changing it. So I'm getting really frustrated, even thinking of quitting. And my wife is the one that pushed me all those years you put in because he was very unstable. And I get, you know, I, I put to get my black belt that, that certain year and to open up a school at a park or a church. Well, guess what? I put that in my vision. I opened up simultaneous at a park. And at a church, yet the one in the church, I didn't get, it was a Catholic church. I didn't get many. I, I stopped it two days later. But no, a week later because I didn't have enough students. I didn't get any students hardly. The other one was doing good. So I did exactly, I put one or the other and I did it at both. I was thinking more of a Christian church. But anyway, I start teaching at a park at a country club, Doral Park Country Club in the pavilion up there. So that happened exactly. And I always, since then, have been writing my vision. And that's where I see the first thing was when I finally accepted the Lord, there was a huge change in me, the person I was. I look back at the person I used to be. And if I would meet that person, I wouldn't like them. I wouldn't even get along with them. And then when I wrote, when, when I started writing the vision, that was it. That was when I started succeeding. Um, I worked at the prison for 10 years. I did, out of those 10 years, two and a half years, I did both teach martial arts and um, work at the prison. And I was teaching, I was teaching at the country club. I was teaching at an elementary school and I was teaching at Bally's um, fitness kickboxing all at the same time. And then eventually I opened up the storefront and um, you know, like I said, my success has been after, after accepting the Lord. Well, we want to welcome all of you that are joining the program at this time. We are via Skype with Julio Anta. He's a martial arts expert, but he's also a man of God. Julio, I can see a lot of the awards and a lot of the pictures. And um, those are uh, things that you have acquired, that you've uh, uh, been able to obtain. Those are victories. Uh, those are uh, conquers that you've done. And um, it's all because of the grace and the, the glory to God giving you the vision, being able to see more than just uh, a, a simple uh, life, more of uh, a life of, of victory. I, I would uh, uh, picture it and, and the describe it in this manner for those that are watching the program and those that are listening in. Yes, um, I feel that, you know, to me, the Lord, one, many years ago, even before, I was already a Christian, but I hadn't done everything I've done. I was in, believe it or not, I was in Walt Disney World, and I saw the Tinkerbell and how you wish on a star, and I go, wow, that's God to me. I go, because he already had changed my life, but I did not know that he was going to, all my dreams as a kid, I've been able to accomplish. And yes, um... I didn't do that much. I did compete in martial arts just to do it because I knew I was going to teach because um, I'm more into the reality-based street self-defense than the sport. And I believe they're two different things. But I did. I have martial arts trophies, yet what I like competing in was bodybuilding. And like I said, um, 1983 and 85, I competed. It took me years to look like a bodybuilder because I was naturally skinny. And I do have, I'm short with small bones, so it's harder for me. So in 83, I competed and I took the best I did. I took two third places and a fourth. Well, I felt that, that it, that I hadn't gotten to where I needed to. So I started working out more like a bodybuilder because I've done all types of things. The first kettlebell certification in the state of Florida was done in my school I was the first person in South Florida and only one of two people to get certified in the ropes, the battling ropes by the guy that developed it. So I've always been 
Um, I was in in Doral, and you could say maybe Northwest Miami. I was the first one to do a fitness kickboxing program. So I've been big into fitness, but it wasn't the bodybuilding. I always try to stay in shape because I believe the Bible says my body is my temple. I have to keep it clean. And mm -hmm. so then as I was getting um, in my late 50s, it, it was I always wanted to compete again because I remember watching to me, I'm 63, to me, they when I was – when I first started that I was that skinny kid, I used to go to all the bodybuilding shows and see the over 35. We call them the old men. All the old men are coming out and they were just over 35. And I go, when I'm old, I want to look like that. Well, I was in shape, but not looking like a bodybuilder. So in my late 50s, I said, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to wait till I'm 60 because I'm going to have a better chance. Then if I'm in my late 50s, the guys that just became 50, because as we age, the body does, you lose a lot, and there's a lot of things, but you could still grow, and I am. So what happened was, at 60, I competed in the South Florida Bodybuilding Championships, used to be called the Mr. South Florida, and I won the overall. I won my weight class and the overall. Then I liked, because it takes me longer to grow than other people, I, like, I don't like competing one after the other. So two years later, last year, 2019, I wanted to compete um, national or international. And I went, a lot of people told me I had the potential. So I went, I wanted to compete in the North American Bodybuilding Championships. But to go, you had to compete first in another tournament that wasn't um, national or international. So I went to the Florida Bodybuilding Championships. There was no weight class there. And I took second. And that qualified me to go to the North America. And the North America in the lightweight division, I took second also. So I felt good first time I competed internationally, literally. I would like to take this opportunity for you uh, to give out a message uh, to all of those that are listening and uh, that are watching that are hopeful about their future and what they want to achieve and uh, that it is possible for God it's nothing impossible for man, but not for God. Exactly. I totally agree. One of my pet peeves is people, uh, people tell me every once in a while, oh, but at your age and you, in your age, well, guess what? I teach martial arts classes. I do things that people half my age can't do. There's people that can do way more things than I can. Um, they say that after 30, you lose 1% of muscle yearly it's true if you lay around but not if you work out i look at people like jack lalane died at 97 or 96 he could do things i couldn't do i cannot do today and i could never maybe do so age is a number i don't care if you're four years old my book is called the ageless warrior ageless warrior fitness and what i mean by ageless warrior is not just for old people ageless okay so if whether you are four years old, both of my kids can do push-ups at four because I train them to do it. Or you're 90 something and you're in, and you're not laying in a bed sick, you can. The whole problem is our mind. Now, if God is for you, who can be against you? Um, my verse on longevity is Caleb in the Bible. Well, Caleb was one of the two spies sent and he was one of the he was one of the two men that that made it to the promised land while the rest of the naysayers and you know that what happened was when they came back the other spies said oh my god there's giants and this and we can't go in there God had promised them the land and things are not going to be easy for us as Christians or anybody it's hard work to be in shape, but it's the same thing. God promised them the land. Caleb said that he that that he talked about the land of milk and honey, the whole great stuff, and that we could take it. Yet the rest didn't. Well, they said that Caleb at was it 84? I can't remember exactly. It's in the Bible, was in the same shape as a warrior as he was when he went in his 40s to, to <laughs> when he went there. So that's who I use. I always put in my book, I put that. We got to be like Caleb. First, have the faith and we can be just as strong or stronger 
as we age. That's wonderful and that's a great message. And I wanna take this opportunity now that we've come to the end of the program for you to talk about your school, where it's located and a little bit about it so everyone can reach out to you that here that is here in our locality. And um, even though they may not be in our location, maybe they can also reach out to you uh, via uh, social media if you have any information to share. Yes, my school is called Antas Fitness and Self-Defense. I've been in Doral for 22 years. I'm on 57, uh, um, 58 and 107. Um, we are website, social media. I teach kids. It's a mixed martial arts, no religion involved or, you know, Asian religion involved, which I made sure we wouldn't have none of that um, in it, which is super important, especially for children. Um, I teach a mixed martial arts system, which is all the different martial arts that I, in my life I've been trained in as an instructor. And for teen and adults, I teach kickboxing and I teach Krav Maga, which is the art of uh, the Israeli martial art. My webs I got two websites, um, Anta, a, my name, without the S, and my school's name is Anta's, apostrophe S, Anta Martial Arts. Dot com is my main website with all different information, even videos. And then I have one just for Krav Maga, which is Doral, D-O-R-A-L, Krav Maga dot com, which that's a tactical one. Um, I even do, I'm the head, I didn't, haven't, I haven't mentioned this, I'm the head of what we call the safety team in my church, CDA. And the safety team is like a security, but we can't call it security. So I'm the head of it. I put the program together and I do that for other churches too. I put security programs on specific places around the church, plus the pastoral, we call it a pastoral assistant. It's almost like a VIP that you're with the pastor if something happens. Now we do all that. That's our tactical part of our training, which I said in the beginning, I have competed, but competition is a sport. I'm more into the reality survival of the streets type of self-defense and i'm on all the social media on facebook you, there's only two julio antas one's my son that lives in new york and myself um and then that's my personal and then i have a, a antas fitness and self-defense a page that i also put a lot of videos and different things and on instagram it's anta martial arts so i'm pretty much on all the social medias and all the different things like that. Thank you, Julio, for spending this time with us and informing us and teaching us about a lot of things that have to do with martial arts, but overall about how important God is in our lives, no matter where we are and what we do. We always exalt Him and, um, you know, we try to reach out to other people so they can seek Him and also achieve their goals in their lifetime. Thank you so much and thank you everyone. I hope this program, like I mentioned before, is, has been a blessing for you. We'll see you on the next Sharing Your Vision. God bless you. Till then, bye-bye.